Modern Mobile Suite is a next-generation inventory management tool designed to be an on-premise solution for Retail Management Hero and Microsoft RMS. Since Modern Mobile Suite runs in a browser, the software is device agnostic. You can run it on an iPhone, an Android, or your desktop. Really any device that has a browser such as Chrome, Safari, Firefox, or Edge. Modern Mobile Suite enables your staff to perform inventory counting while the store is open. So as staff moves through their daily processes, people can be selling and receiving items, all while inventory counting is in process. When the count is posted, Modern Mobile Suite will take any deltas into account. Modern Mobile Suite also allows multiple users per count. You can then audit and merge those counts before posting to the database. Therefore, multiple staff members can perform periodic cycle counts or full inventory counts as your process requires. Now we'll show you a demonstration of the Modern Mobile Suite software. On the right side of the screen, you can see the Modern Mobile Suite software, and on the left side is the Retail Management Hero Back Office Manager software. First, we're going to log in and choose our user. Modern Mobile Suite operates with the concept of lists. And as you can see here, we have some lists already created. On the My Lists screen, there are buttons for filtering your lists by generic lists, inventory counts, purchase orders, transfers in, and transfers out. This way, you can filter the lists you wish to see. Lists of products coming into the store could be viewed with POs and transfers in selected. Now we'll show you how a basic inventory count works. First, we'll click the plus and create a new list. You can name your list and start counting items. You are able to use a single scan and manual quantity entry. Or you can turn on quick scan, which will increase the quantity by one for each scan. Once you have your items and quantities added, you will then turn the list into an inventory count. The inventory count summary will show the total values, quantities, and unique products, as well as the overcounted summary and the undercounted summary details. If you wish to view the details of the items over or undercounted, you can dive deeper and see additional information that makes up those summary totals. As you can see with the first item, Five were counted, but the database only shows one in stock, so you are over by four or 400%. The second item is over by three items or 300% and so on. We can then commit the inventory count as a cycle or full commit. For this example, we'll do a cycle commit. Once the cycle commit is accepted, you can see that the refreshed RMH database now shows the updated inventory quantities. Next, we'll show how to merge multiple lists. After choosing Merge Lists, we see two generic lists for Randy and Mark's counts. We'll select both lists and then choose to merge selected. This new list can be named and then viewed with the combined item detail displayed. We can then post this merge list as an inventory count. Once converted to an inventory count, we will see the count summary and view the under and over counted details. This time, we'll do a full commit where all products are updated. Any products not counted in the list will be set to zero. If you would like to have a count performed on a specific set of items, you can perform an inventory count through a scoped count. You would create a list and before any items are added, turn that list into an inventory count. MMS then presents the ability to set the scoping options by category, department, 
search term, or supplier. If you use the search term blue, the scope would include 81 products. The search term red would present 90 products. Our scope search term of yellow includes five products to be counted. From here, you can scan the scoped product barcodes or perform an easy manual entry. The count can then be updated to the database via full or cycle commit. As you will observe here, we can also track serial items and review the serial numbers counted as well. Now let's review the MMS purchase order module. First, we'll create a new list. Then, we'll quick scan in the items we want to include on this order. Once the items are included, we will create a purchase order from this list. The module prompts you to choose which supplier option you wish to use for the PO, either the primary supplier or the lowest cost supplier. For this example, we'll choose Primary Supplier. Once the Supplier option is selected, we can see that two separate POs have been created based on the Primary Supplier of those items on the original list. From here, we can view the individual purchase orders in rich detail. You can view the quantity to be purchased, the item lookup code, and other PO detail. If you want to see additional information about the items, you can click the item lookup code to get to the product lookup screen. This screen displays purchasing history of the item, such as cost and quantity ordered, item details such as on-hand quantities and availability, general item details like description, department, and category, pricing, bin location, supplier details, aliases, and more. Many of the item properties can be edited on the fly. You can then see that the item detail that was changed in MMS is now present in the RMH database. When we return to the PO, we can see the cost extended cost, description, available on-hand quantity, our price, and the supplier reorder number. What's even more helpful is that you can view the suggested by quantity. If you click the ellipsis symbol, you can drill down into the sales history for this PO item. In this example, we see that the suggested by for 45 days is a quantity of 15. This suggestion is based on sales data from the last 45 days of this year, the next 45 days from last year, and the last 45 days from last year. You can see that based on last year's numbers, sales trajectories are increasing. We also show the suggested buy for 150 days if you are purchasing for a longer span of time. Here we can see that over 150 days last year, the velocity for this item was decreasing. The number of days for this suggested buy can be changed based on your purchasing timing and sales history data you wish to display. This suggested buy information can be extremely helpful when determining the quantity of items you wish to purchase for your designated time period. From here, 
If you like the quantities that the suggested buy recommends, you can choose to apply those quantities to all items on the PO at once by choosing Buy Suggested for 45 days or Buy Suggested 150 days. After selecting for the 45-day period, the PO entries are updated to the suggested buy quantities. We can then refresh to see the new PO totals. Now we can release the PO. Once released, the purchase order then goes into PO receive mode. When your order arrives, you can add or reject items, quick receive all, or you can receive the items by manually counting them. Here we will manually enter that we received 14 of the first item instead of the 15 we ordered. That line item goes red to indicate a shortage. The second item we received two instead of the one ordered, so that line item turns yellow to indicate an overshipped quantity. We can then click to receive those entered quantities. Since the items were not all received, the PO module allows you to either create a new purchase order with the remainder, keep this same PO open to receive the remainder at a later time, or close the purchase order and ignore the remainder. Once we have received our PO items, we can then print labels for all received products, just the items received in the current session, or we can choose to not print labels this time. If we print for all received items, we can then choose the quantities we wish to have printed, either corresponding to the quantity counted, the quantity on hand, or by designating a specified number to print. We are either able to use the default printer, or if this print session is for labels other than the main default label, we can turn off the defaults. We are then able to select the label and printer we wish to use for this specific printing session. As you can see in the job queue, both labels printed and the job is completed. Another feature in our PO module is the ability to add a comment to a PO, which is helpful in the event of the PO being designated for a specific purpose or customer. We can also manage the details on a PO based on the concept of landed cost. In Manage Details, we see some information about the PO itself such as total PO cost and quantity of items and unique item counts. If we have duties or taxes that are being applied to the ordered items, we can spread those costs across our cost of goods sold in the system. This landed cost can be based on the quantity of items or the dollar value. Whatever the configuration in RMH for landed cost, we respect that setting when applying these values. It is also easy to create a list just for label printing. We'll start our list and scan the items that require labels into the list. We can then select label printing and that allows us to select the quantity of labels needed for those items listed. Once your quantity is selected, the label print job is sent to the queue. Any IP-based wireless or Ethernet printer compatible with ZPL is supported. We can also take a generic list and turn it into a transfer out. Selecting transfer allows you to choose the store to which you are transferring the items out and initiate the process. You can edit the quantities being transferred out and then release the transfer and issue or print labels as required. Receiving transfers in is very similar to receiving POs. Within the transfer in, 
we can enter the quantities manually, quick receive all, or reject the transfer. Receiving then prompts for label printing as needed. We're open to user feedback, so please feel free to contact us with questions or requests for more information. Thank you for taking the time to review the Modern Mobile Suite.